The maraca is our first instrument for most of us. That's because baby rattles are very soothing to a little one. Um, I've known that to be true, at least in my experience with three little ones. Um, and I also think that the maraca is a soothing instrument for us adults too. I think it's one of the most important primary tools for, for us adults as far as handling emotions and energy. So I really like the idea of having a nice, pleasant maraca available. Unfortunately, in my experience, I have found it difficult to find a good maraca. Before COVID, before this pandemic, it was hard to find a good maraca, and it's harder now. So in the past, I imagine you would go to your instrument store and you would test drive a bunch of maracas or you would test drive a bunch of instruments and choose your favorite. Um, that's the idea I had in mind. And then I went to a couple music stores. I live here in Austin, the live music capital of the world. And even our primo music stores didn't have a good maraca. They had some plastic, mass produced kinds of maracas, but they didn't have anything with the human touch. They didn't have any thing that sounded very natural to me so I decided I might as well try to <laughs> make them that car how hard could it be it seems pretty basic right well it's not as easy as I thought it took me a couple of years before I found my favorite and I have a couple other favorites too different flavors for different occasions When I call the cricket because it has a light crickety sound. Anyhow, I want to show you about maracas. I want to encourage you and maybe empower you to take it under your own wing, take this project under your own wing, use your own creativity, and come up with a sound that is distinctly yours something you can be really excited about, something that will resonate and feel good to you. I have a bunch of different kinds here to choose from, and I want to basically just say that anyone can do this. Um, what I'm finding is that some shells are available from household supplies, sticks, everyone knows where to find a stick, um, I really prefer these juniper sticks, which uh, juniper, cedar, these, these trees hold a lot of healing potential. In my experience, you know, that's one of the reasons why we bless ourselves with cedar smoke and we sage ourselves, we smudge ourselves with the, with the cedar and the juniper. So anyway... There's so much to be said about the spirituality and the, you know, the healing potential and the, you know, the, the, the sound vibration and all of these ethereal concepts, but I'm just going to try to keep it simple and basic and talk to you like my brother and say, dude, <laughs> you can do this and you can do a great one. Put your own touch on it, make it yours, and it'll be something of a tool for, for you that you can call upon when you'd like some rhythm, when you'd like to carry your rhythm, when you'd like to bring a bit of a percussion to the singing. So much we can do with a maraca. Um, so I'll start with what I think is kind of like a certain standard. And this one kind of has a loud sound to it, so it's not my favorite. But I've seen these a lot of different ways, and in certain circles, you see a lot of people with this style of maraca. It's basically a tin can with a stick attached. 
a lot of times you see uh, a screw going all the way through the thing and into the thing. Um, this one here sounds like this. It's a pretty good sound, nice and crisp. It's a little too tinny for me. I uh, prefer not to sound like a tin can. <laughs> But I'll tell you about this kind. Um, so a lot of the time I see people sit in a circle with a bunch of people playing music and you know you have about 20 of these and it gets pretty loud. But that's with amplified guitars and uh, you know 30, 40, 50 people singing together. And so it's nice to have a bunch of maracas in the room but you really don't want it to be too loud. And we want it to sound pleasant. Most of all, with the percussion, with the percussion instrument, we want crisp, crispness. <laughs> we want a crisp sound. Okay. So that metal on metal sound is the sound of metal ball bearings swishing around in this tin can. You can get a lot of different sounds out of this one maraca. Swishing sound. And then other elements inside, of course, make a different sound. Here's a really nice one that I like a lot with sand inside. Extremely quiet by comparison, but sometimes when I'm recording, we have to have a real sweet sound and it can be gentle the maraca is going to go way back in the back of the mix i personally just really like the sound maybe i'm home alone singing a little waltz to myself just need a touch of maraca that's a good way so the first one i really loved is this little one i call it the marashimba for a little while um, but now I call it the cricket. It's a, it's a, you know, somebody explained these maracas to me one time like a little sword. It's kind of like a sword. They help us be firm in our thoughts, you know, take good care of our emotions. These, these things that can get way out of hand through the wavering nature of these emotions. It's nice to have a, a lightsaber, right? You know, a, a sword, a a little bit of angelic protection. And so that's why I think these are called swords to some people. Um, I'm also told that we play the maraca at our chest level from the heart. A lot of people you see going like this. And it just looks really awkward, you know, you don't want to be playing around down there while in the middle of a ceremony or whatever. So it comes from the chest, it comes from the heart, it's an extension of the heart. And then I'm also told that we play the maraca in the palm. So this is one of my favorites. Now I made this one out of some supplies I found at a arts and crafts store. This is called uh, a candle holder. It's the candle holder model of cup. And a <laughs> funny story. One time I used one of these for an actual candle and almost burned the house down because the candle just started this piece of wood on fire once it got low enough. So it's cosmic that it's actually used for a candle. But <laughs> outside of using it for an actual candle holder, it makes a great maraca cup. <laughs> and then, you know, I had to find a way to seal the cup so I didn't want to risk it with this direct you know wood inside the cup so I, I just found this other wheel this is a wheel wooden wheel you can get these in kits of you know dozens so anyway that became a complete seal seals the beads inside there 
And then I have this real long, I think it's a three inch long bolt that goes straight through and down in there. It's really secure. I love this one. I've had it for a couple of years. It's got, it's got my flavor on the handle. I love it. Um, of course, this is juniper, just some scrap juniper I found in the yard, but I love it. It's got this cool texture. It's like you can go places journeying <laughs> to this wood grain. It's so cool. Really like all the texture here. I can, you know, catch different grips on it at different times. Maybe my hand muscles are getting sore <laughs> after hours of playing the maraca, which is a real thing. That's what I do. And so... Anyway, I find this one to be really luxurious. It's got a little bend to it. It's just, just raw and wild. Um, here I have this rose quartz attached to the bottom. At first I was using this old fashioned kind of Gorilla Glue that bubbled up, it's all wild. Now we have this more sophisticated kind of Gorilla Glue that just gets a nice little bond there with the, with the precious stone and the, and the wood. So yeah, I really recommend this kind of Gorilla Glue. I don't know what you call it, really. Um, for the for the maraca handle, these are these are fallen juniper. I wouldn't harvest a juniper tree live; they they live forever. So something that's fallen is pretty easy to find where I live in Central Texas. So anyway, I just um, find this dead, dying piece of wood and. Uh, peel off the bark, um, sand it down with some sandpaper, and then I put some oil on it. I was using oil, olive oil, or I mean uh, almond oil for a while. I think that's the best. Also, coconut oil would work. Um, my second flavor, this one was a little quiet. People started asking me to make them for other people. And then they didn't know how to play this kind. This kind you play like this by tapping your hand. It gets plenty loud most of the time. But people wanted a louder one. I did too. So then I I found I tried to find the the next biggest wooden cup that I could find. So at my local craft store, found this next size up one. It's called a flower pot flower pot model of a wooden bowl thing. <laughs> found another wheel, sealed that up. <laughs> another funny story. <laughs> First, when I was working with this size, put the end this way, but it looked way too phallic when that was that way. So anyway, this way doesn't look that way. Now it looks cool <laughs> to me. It works. So anyway, got to seal it up. Last thing you want is your head coming off in the middle of a ceremony or your floor at your house with a bunch of kids and spilling a thousand BBs around. Um, I like these bolts. I look for, you know, I follow my intuition and follow the flow when I'm making the decisions that I make. I, I like the sacredness of this hexagon here that I saw when I saw it. I like the perfect circle too. Um, you know, you make these your own, so spiritually and symbolically choosing tools that suit you is a really cool idea i think um here i just had this regular glass bead i don't even know where i got it the kids must have came up with it um for whatever reason it suits me on this one i like the sound pretty good one for having around the campfire um, I asked my kids the other day, we had a school project, so school got canceled a couple months ago, and we decided, I decided that I would include them on my maraca making journey, and so they really enjoyed the process of deciding what they would want to fill the thing with, what they would, um, how long and how thin, and what particular branch they wanted to choose, what jewel. They made it their own. They really enjoyed this process. And so here's uh, just some examples of some artistry. So we found these. This one sounds a little clumsy. Inside, we have these polished river rocks. 
they're pretty good. I really like them. Um, in my heart intelligence, that was the way to go because it's it's right in front of me. It's natural. I didn't have to buy anything. It's just using these parts that already exist. And so in this case, I had this Russian doll set. See, this one goes in that one. This one goes in that one. This one goes in that one. So, you know, the Russian dolls. <laughs> uh, it turns out they make great maraca cups. So this is the biggest one, kind of the dumbest one. But it's got some cool ideas. One, I really like that we use these natural rocks, these polished river stones. They just have a, they, they're home, they're made, they're homemade, they're made here in nature right in the middle of the river. So that's cool. Um, the sound is a little funny. Can get crisp. Requires some kind of like, artistry to be able to get it to be crisp though because they kind of want to play anyway I don't know if you can if you understand what I'm saying uh, we decided with a wood burning kit we could cool, get some cool textures so this one is pretty cool it's got a mermaid tail mermaid scales you know or snake skin whatever you call it um, another flavor this one's a little more traditional got some wood burning put this shell on the bottom um, the sounds pretty good it's got a hundred and eight beads in there which I really like I, I like that I counted those out and you know put that intention in it that way this is one I made for my daughter Rosalie really like it this is my favorite sound So this one, smaller shell, I put more beads in that. Just intuitively, I thought it sounded best at this in this way with 144 beads. And there's a lot of symbology in that number 144 for me too. So I really like the the sacredness that I see in that number. Put some you know imagery on the handle that's meaningful to me and her, and the sweet little bead that she picked out. Love it. So my son, who's five, he chose this sweet sound. With 10 sweet little uh, stones in here. Yeah, we have the polished stones that we found at the same place that had these polished stones. I just chose the tiniest polished stones. <laughs> it's almost a laughable, tiny little sound, so sweet. Sweet kids, sweet sound, right? Um, yeah, so this is my favorite flavor. It's a pretty traditional size maraca. It looks pretty attractive. Spray painted the top with gold. Um, I'd say this is a pretty ordinary size. Uh, the the length of the handle is a consideration, definitely something to test drive on your own. The width, you know, the thickness of the handle is something to decide for yourself. Um, this might be a little long for my daughter, but it feels really good for me. This is the length that she liked though. Anyhow, that's about all I have to say. If you have any questions, I'd love to answer them and give you my perspective. Um, one thing I didn't say is these, Tin cans are pretty easy to find too. This is the, I guess, quarter pint size of a paint can. Um, but before I found these, I was using the cans for condensed milk. And they were cool because they said shake here embossed on the tin. So anyway, a lot of ways to find enjoyment and express artistry through the making of maracas and of course the playing of maracas. Um, say about that much from here you, you take it on your own journey and definitely be in touch if you have any questions. Adios!